Hey everyone, hope you're staying warm. Imagine I have a table. The table has column headings and it's easy to confirm the column headings. You can grab all the text and then use my Cypress map plugin to map every element to its inner text and compare the headings. But how do you confirm the values from each row? With headings, it's easier because it's just a list. With row, it's almost like an object. Right, you have a name property, you have an age, and you have a date. So what you really want to do is maybe form an object out of cells. So how would you do that? So imagine we're trying to confirm the first cell or the first row, right? The first person. We can get the rows, get the first row, and then we can find all TD elements. So that will give us the actual cells. Okay. Now you can use then and what would you get? You would get a jQuery element and we'll call it TD. And you could return an object where you would say, okay, so the name comes from the first element in that row, it's inner text. And similarly, you would say a second cell contains the age and maybe the last one contains the date. So this will yield you an object. So now you can confirm it. So Dave age 20 and the date is, you know, December 23rd of this year. Okay. Well, you have a problem, right? First of all, the exception is not really informative. The main thing here is that you want to process the age as well. Okay. So there are a couple problems with this test. It's not very readable, right? You use a lot of boilerplate code and you also did not convert the values. You could convert the value right here, right? So your callback will become more and more complicated. Before I proceed to write this test, I just wanna say, okay, let's say you wanna confirm like arrow, right? Not the first one, but maybe a row with carry. What you would do, you would say instead of get, you'll say contains row and the text carry. And then you would remove first and, you know, this would be uh, the carry, um, you know, fields. Okay, before we do this, let's, let's go back to Dave. Notice that we are getting all elements and we immediately get the first one, second, and the third. You can use the spread command. And in this case, you would get each element from the subject as a single argument. So you could say, uh, this is an element name, age, date. So these are dumb elements now. So we can say from age and the date. Okay, so slightly better. And notice sci then and sci spread do not retry, so they're not queries. So you better show that the row is correct. Okay, but let's rewrite this a little bit cleaner. Okay, so once we find the cells, we want to map them to the inner text, right? Because that's what we're doing right here. So why do it in three steps? And if you can say, take all the cells and map each element to its inner text. And what would you get? Well, now you would get a name and you would get the age, which you would convert and you would get the date, right? Much simpler, right? Just by replacing with a single query, which will retry. Well, once you have a list, right? Imagine you use then, right? What would you get here? Well, you would get some values, right? You can use Cypress zip object from Lodash, okay? Where you could say, okay, um, what are the props? Well, these are literally the names of a property. So the first column would be name, then the age, then the date. So you would zip it up and you say, take those, props, an array, and combine it with values. And you would get a single object. And look, we can remove it. Now it is still a string, right? But notice how we replaced, you know, custom code with like standard operation. Take two arrays and zip it up in a single object. You know what's cool about this? It was, we can then convert the age. We can say, apply to whatever you get, right? So apply comes from Cypress map again. So this is a person and you can say, okay, return person. 
But before that, you say person age is a number person age. So you convert it to actual number. So you separate, you know, creating an object from updating its property. And it's so common to update a property that there is a method in Cypress map called update. And you say update the age property and pass a callback that will get the value and return the new value. So you can say just a number because that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, look at this then, right? First of all, there is apply method in Cypress map because it acts like a van, but it's retriable. It's a query. Okay. So that's already better. And second, we want to call this function and we already know the first argument props. All we're waiting for is the current subject that will be placed as the second argument. So we can partially apply it, this callback and say, I know the first argument, just use that. So there is partial in Cypress map where you take the object, uh, not the object, the function, and you pass all the known arguments. And then it will just wait for the subject to call that zip object with props and values. Okay. So now we split our, you know, complicated custom logic into just a pipeline of transformations. We take um, a jQuery object, map each element to inner text property, then use zip object with given props and the current values, update one field and then compare it. Now it's all good, but this assertion is not really informative, right? So this is why I prefer using SciSpark plugin. So here we can say instead of should, we can say should and then spark and you just describe the objects or properties that you want. Okay, so the name, yes, Dave, the age spark, maybe let's give it a range from 10 to 99. And the date, just test a regular expression. Starts with four digits, then the month, then the date and ends. Okay, so imagine we specify incorrect range and for some reason, you know, we say between 10 and 19, the error the size pack shows with all the fields that satisfied the properties and one that doesn't is extremely informative. So this was our transformation to make sure that we can validate a row in a table in a really nice, readable and easy to update manner. And just one tip at the end, Cypress map has print command. So you can print what you're getting right here. So for example, you can see if you zip the object correctly, maybe update the number and so on. So you can see where you went wrong. So check out Cypress map. I'll link it in the description of this video.